Okay, so I just got asked some really good questions, and one was really, really good of what is that thing in your neck? I answered him some. It's called a tracheostomy implant. It's a breathing tube through my throat. It takes a lot of work, a lot of knowledge to know how to operate it. I have no idea where to start. I've had mine for two and a half years, which is an outrageous out of the normal, but I have known people to have them for 15, that I worked under their care to take care of them. When I was a kid, I made this little thing for people that lived in the snow climate. It's really dirty. It was mine for this winter. I need to take it apart and clean it. Um, maybe replace the fabric, but I don't need to. I can just scrub it with some stain booster and clean it really good. It's not dry or safe, so that's a problem. But it's still got a lot of life um, to it. It really does. I just have to clean the sponges properly, which would be taking them off and scrubbing them wetting them from the, the clean side down through and rinsing them down through so that dirt does not go into the sponge and then scrubbing the outside cover with pink bar and a toothbrush it's, it's just soap on a toothbrush from the pink bar which is a stain booster it's really powerful stuff and then lather it and, and rinse it you know and Still, dirt side down, dirt side out. Clean it really good. Uh, so this is a trach heater. It goes on like this. Hold on, let me turn on the light because maybe you can't see it. Okay, so this is a trach heater. I put it on, I used to do buttons and snaps with bandanas that I folded to make ribbons. Sometimes I did ribbons, stuff like that. It's kind of painful to wear. We did not have these headbands when I was a kid for my clients. So most of the time it's a bandana with a little bit of foam inside of it. Or t-shirt material. I, I used a lot of t-shirt material. So. It's been lined and it's been taped, the plastic has been taped, it's double layer plastic bottles that have been cut so that they fit properly inside and sewn together. Yeah, they're sewn together. The one inside is sewn together and then and then it's, it's sewn to the outside one. By this little headband that is a guard so that it doesn't cut me and it doesn't irritate me. So, so, and, then, and then to brace it, it has a little headband, you know, like what we wore in the 80s. So you wear it over your head on your forehead. And then I have to regulate my temperature. So, at about 65, 67 to 65, 69 degrees, anything under 70, I go with this on as long as it's above 60. Below 60, I have to start doing a heater on its different levels. At about 45, 50, about 45, I have to be on high. Anything lower than that, I have to double up here. So that's why, and because I'm moving to the snow district, that's why I made one of these. It's 
a bigger bottle. I've been dreaming about getting out of here for a while. And I decided, fuck it, I'm gonna make one anyways. If it comes around, it comes around. If it doesn't, it doesn't, whatever. So I made one of these. I have to put on the headband and do it that nine yards and I have headbands to do it. So there's one. All of them. All of them have a little hot pad in them. This one has silicone. This one has a little oven mitt, oven pad that has been stitched up with, with t-shirt. so that I'll be able to play in the snow um, and go to the doctor's appointments, whatever, until we get the trade out. And if we can't get the trade out, because there's a possibility that my surgery might fail, I'm working really hard to prevent that from happening, but there is a possibility that it might fail. You have to keep a proper humidified environment to otherwise block up and clog. Um, for dealing with clogging, I use an Addy pack. So whenever I dry out, I clog. To deal with that, I take out, Take out the inner cannula, which winds up getting crusty, and put in a new one. But before we put in a new one, we clean out the trach. To keep it from getting clogged, that filter that I wear on my throat. This filter, I keep wet at all times. Depending on the humidity level, depends on how many spray bottle wets it gets and at what distance and all that nine yards. It's a whole lot of math. So you basically have to, and, and kind of feel for it. So, you know, but you have to get your pneumonia vaccine on the regular often. Also, I smoke from, uh, from an e-cigarette to help keep this thing wet and help keep me wet. That's what she said. Anyways. Anyways. Excuse me, I have to get a new inner cannula because otherwise this trach will get dirty and it's really nasty if it gets dirty. So the inner cannulas are watchable. They're really sticky though. You have to be very careful with them. This brand, this new make and model of this brand, you have to rinse the outside of these and then, or double wash them in peroxide. So they have to be washed first in peroxide if they dry out, like I've been doing. Wash first in peroxide mixed with hot water and then rinsed and cleaned and scrubbed out and then washed again in peroxide and hot water and then rinsed in hot water. Because of the fact that they are textured, they're textured on the outside. But believe it or not, that texture on the outside actually helps me to breathe more through my mouth and nose.
Most often I run a humidifier in my apartment. I don't always do it. Uh, I haven't had one in here, so I just try to keep things wet and moist. That type of stuff. Um, I'm not able to go outdoors in any weather above 100 degrees. Ever. Ever. Not at all. Ever. This is an extra external humidifier. This green one is a humidifier. It's an it's a it's called an external humidifier or a Drake HME. So I'll tell you about both of them. This one I wear on extreme hot days that are above, say above 79 degrees. Above 79 degrees, I have to wear this and I have to moisten it down, especially over 80 or 85. At about 85, I'm dying from heat exhaustion and I'm spraying that thing down so much. But living in the desert, this thing's nice because it blocks the dust and it lifts so I can talk when it's still on, covering my covering my trach to prevent me from breathing in dust. Just like so. And it stays wet so that, you know, because I wet it down, I spray it down. I have to monitor how much I do. I normally just feel the outside and wet it down some more, you know, like feeling up based off of the outside. Um, it's normally just two, one to two sprays from the outside, depending, you know. I try not to let myself get dried out because I can feel it. And it's excruciating painful when I dry out. These dark circles are if I drink too much soda or coffee and if I haven't been taking care of my trach stuff. I've been drinking a lot of soda and coffee. It's really bad for me, but I, I had a few, I had a few weeks where I drank nothing but water. Fuck, I hate water, so I'm on a soda kick right now. I love water, but I cannot stand plain water. It's so nasty, and I ran out of sugar for the last week and a half. Just got my food stamps, so baby, I'm drinking some soda. I'm sorry, but it's so true. I know I'm bloated, I'm gassy, I'm all sorts of stuff. Um, it's like a musical rhinoceros in my bedroom at night. Okay, so this is a trachea to me. They make a few different models. There are some that have paper cardboard. Those are for humidity states. Not for the desert, but they work really good in the rain during the summer monsoon, those paper ones, but they're disposable. You have, they're good still because you can cut sponges to fit in them and lace them with string so that they stay on. They still work. Cartridges are pretty decent. They're good. I kept them. The hospital gave me a handful of them. So I was like, well, so I appreciate that. They make a different one that has a port for, for humidity environments. Um, this one is a closed port for dusty environments. The place that I'm moving to is still dusty. It's still in the desert. It's just a higher climate that gets more snow and rain. Not that much more. So, but for that, I can open this little vent, it's an oxygen port, and let it breathe out. It also spreads boogers out of it, so I don't know if I want to leave it open. I try to be careful and catch it, but when I have a cough that I can't catch, and a little bit of booger that I can't catch, 
I'm going to be frank. I can't think of this thing, so I clean it still. I clean them all the time. Uh, I try to do a batch every couple of days to clean my stuff of peroxide and hot water. It's 25% peroxide, 75% hot water. And then I soak them for about 10 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes. And then I scrub and rinse them. And the peroxide, uh, like, dilute, they completely, it turns all the mucus into, like, foam. Like, sea foam. It's weird. Uh, it's cool. It's neat. You know, whatever. I'm a little mini chemist. So, I'm going to have to get a different type of trade filter for up there when it rains. But I still need this one. Because it snows up there, and this one is perfect for drilling the snow. It's a lot warmer. The other one has an open vent that just lets air in and out. And I think I'm going to try to stick with just this one and reduce the moisture. Okay, now let's go look at my machine that I have to sleep with at night. It won't let me turn it around, so let me try to face it. This is my trick humidifier machine. I have to set it at the proper humidity level to regulate so that I'm living in... I would say 60% humidity. So I set it... Each machine is different. Each machine is way different, but I set it as if I'm living in 60% humidity. breathing my salvatory glands. So mine is set at 70% air, 30% humidity. Seriously, I wake up drenched every morning. I don't I don't know how anybody can go in the world. In the new environment I go to, it's going to be about 80-85% or set at 80 or 85, which would be 15% humidity, 85% air. Um, still a lot. It's, I mean, it's good. It's just, it's a lot of math, and you have to know how the machines work and all that, and you're the whole thing. Just like a CPAP, except for the fact that it has a mask that goes over my tracheostomy. It's really gross. It's really gross. I cough boogers all night. All night. Seriously, I breathe them and gurgle them, and then I'm like, huh. It's from my bed. Like, I keep, I, I sleep with my blanket covering my face. My blanket gets a booger crust every night. Every freaking night. It's nasty. Yeah, no, I will never sleep with someone while I have a trach. Like, oh, God. I never really want, I never like sleeping with anyone any before than either. Cause the guy my grandparents liked so much, the two guys my grandparents liked so much, one was an alcoholic, all about himself, and was never about the earth, and just wanted to possess what was on it. And I'm, I'm a farmer, you know, I grew up with orchards. I had a strawberry orchard to myself. That grew strawberries by 10,000 every few, like literally. Every season, I had probably about 40,000 40, strawberries. Mm. 
And then when I got to Arizona, I bought a citrus orchard that I revived. Because I had been working in the woods in Alabama. And was trained to all that stuff. So for me to date some dirt bike moron, doesn't give a shit and just wants to drink, 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 and then go out and blow gas and blow dust everywhere. And thinks he's so hot to fuck and all this thing yards and it just, just seriously sucked. And then the next guy was an auto mechanic and my grandparents were like, well, it's network and he'll get you through college and da 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 because they had the belief that it's a man's job to make a woman worthwhile, not for families. I don't know, it's some fucking 1940s bullshit. So. Especially since I had a scholarship to go to Juilliard because I sang, the, I sang opera. And I had, I, because of my tracheostomy work that I did when I was in elementary and junior high from sewing, I had a scholarship to go to Princeton Medical School and acceptance. And then high school from studying law school to put my father, who was a member of the ugliest ring of the cartel you could imagine, into prison. I got a scholarship to go, I got a scholarship and, and acceptance letters to both Harvard and Yale. So I was sort of a genius, trapped with giant fucking drugging morons that don't even know how to do drugs right. So that's all I have to say about it. My life has sucked and I went through some crazy shit and I finally said fuck it over a lot of stuff. And God and the world said we're not ready to have you gone yet. So here I am doing shit that I knew. So that's it. You know, and when it happened, I'd say, if I live, I live. If I die, I die. Let's go, blaze on. And that's what happened. <laughs>